Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own content center category completely from scratch. So if you go into the content center, and you can find this on the manage tab, the content center panel, here's the editor tool. If we look at the merged view, you see you've got all sorts of pre-built categories for the different modules. But then you've got one where it's just kind of all on its own. So this is a, just as an example of a test category where I can store my own parts. And as long as I don't need to use the parts in any of the other modules like tube and pipe, frame generator, bolted connection, I can absolutely create my own categories just to store parts that I want people to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, custom library and you do need to have one. So I'm using the custom library that I'm creating for my AU class this year. And then I right click in the category view and I can create my new category. So it's relatively straightforward. I'm gonna call this one planks and plates because I'm gonna store all my wood planks and all of my steel plates, metal plates, et cetera, et cetera in here. And this is just kind of a quick overview. I mean, I could load images. I've got some already queued up here. So they have to be bitmaps. But I load up my images for the, both the small and the large views. And so those are the different library views we have. And most importantly, though, you can set up the criteria for your parameters. So by right-clicking inside, we can add parameters. We can give them names, width, for example. And then you set up the data structure you want. So I'm going to do a real. I want to use inches. And then you decide, is this a required parameter or is it something that's just optional? So if it's required, anybody that publishes to this category must have this parameter. So I'll go ahead and add a couple. I'm going to add four total, so I'll go as quickly as I can. I explained it the first time, so I'm not going to explain it for all the other ones. Grab the next one. And so here we go. Now this next one, though, so those are the sizing. I want to add one additional one, which is material. Whoops, right click and add it. Click here to make a material. So I want to be able to combine these, which you can't do in other categories. For example, having multiple materials in the structural and in the tube and pipe area doesn't work really well. But since this is my own category, I can totally make this a string. And I want this to be required as well. So here's the most important fact when creating a category is once you create the category, you cannot go back and edit the parameters later. So what I mean by that is um, now that I've created this, I right click, I wanna go to the category properties. I could change the image. I could play with some other stuff, but I have no option to modify or add. It's completely grayed out. And the reason that you can't go back and change a category parameter property is because we're using this to determine which families get added to the category. So if we've had this criteria for the first categories, we can't switch the criteria partway through for new families. So you really want to take some time and think about what you want to be in that category. And then you make sure those parameters are created. Or you can create parameters that you might need. And instead of requiring them, you could set them to optional. So once you create the category, you can't go back and edit the parameters. So to see how this works, then I'm going to go ahead and hit done. Actually, I'll, uh, one more thing. I'll go ahead and create a subcategory for wood. And I'm not going to go through the same thing. I mean, I could, you know, you can't really change that, but I could put different images on there. I'm not going to bother with that. So I created a subcategory now for my completely new category. Hit done. And then I've got a test part here that I've already authored. 
Uh, I should say I've already put parameters in so I can link up. And so when I go to publish this part, I'm going to publish it to my new library, but I can put it in my newly minted category. So I hit next here once I put it in the wood folder and you have to map it to all of your particular user parameters. So I'll grab the user parameters first because those will be the most straightforward. And then one last one. Perfect. Now this last one is actually a material. You can grab this from the I properties. And in the project, there is a material breakout. So you can hit OK. And that actually grabs the current material from your design. So I go next, and then we pick the items that's most important. I want the thickness, then I want the width, then I want the length, and then material. So I actually did that in the backwards order, so that's okay because now I can show you, you can rearrange these in any order that you want. Those are the order that the users will select when placing. And the rest of this pretty straightforward. I'm going to call this um, wood plank. And then you could put in whatever descriptions you want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The only thing I would recommend here is that you would want to put in a manufacturer because that will make it easier to build filters later on but you can edit all of this information after the family has been published. So since that's not the focus of my video, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and I'll publish this part. So jumping back into the editor, we can now see that inside of our wood, there's our wood plank. If we look at the family table, we could add a row and then we would be able to grab all of these different things. And I just wanted to show the material dropdown. It does grab the material list from your currently active material library. So we could absolutely create different uh, lengths. And then that would be our design. So that's how you can create your own custom categories. So you can store your parts as long as they don't have to be used in any of the design accelerators, as I mentioned, this is a great way to partition your data and utilize it however you wish. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out and have a blessed day.